sure it's still a. Uh... Oh my god! Oh my lord! There's so many! On the right, careful. Oh shit! Oh, yep! And welcome to the channel, everybody. I hope you're doing fine. So. Today we will have a look at Aliens Fireteam Elite. The game released the 24th of August 2021. At the time of making this video, I had a total playtime of 30 hours. We will do a detailed review about the game, and to do that we will cover the following topics. First of all, what is the game about? And then we will talk about the art style and graphics, also the performance, audio is very important, story and immersion, then the difficulty settings, the game has single player and multiplayer, so we're gonna have a look at that. Then also the unique selling point, why should you be interested in the game? Then what did I like, but also what did I maybe not like, or what should probably, in my opinion, be improved or changed? Then playtime and replay value is always very important. And then a question that I get a lot, should you buy the game? And also the score. Let's get this started. Let's start with the most important topic, what is Aliens Fighting Elite? Alright, so Aliens Fighting Elite takes place in the Alien Universe. I know, quite shocking. It's a cooperative third-person shooter. The group has, at max, three people. You play it alone, then you will get two bots, or you play it with one or two friends. And you're fighting against Xenomorph. There are classes, challenge cards, y you know what? I'm gonna show you that real quick. In total you have currently 7 classes, the Gunner, the Demolisher, the Technician, the Dog, the Recon and the Phalanx. Some classes need to be unlocked first, for example to play the Recon class you must finish the campaign first. All of them have access to different types of guns, abilities and perks. All classes come with 2 abilities. Let's have a look at 3 of them. The Demolisher has a shoulder mounted rocket launcher to, well, demolish enemies and to get a damage boost for himself and a blast wave for crowd control. The Technician is more of a support class. He has a turret to give firepower support and charged coils that damage and slow your target. They even stick to enemies. The Dog has a suppression station that heals allies and, depending on your perks, can debuff and slow your enemies. He is also one of the classes that can trigger a buff for the whole group, called Combat Sticks. So as you can see, this makes the classes rather unique and you can build some interesting group setups. You can experiment with that a lot. Your characters can be augmented with perks, I have already a few of them unlocked. Depending on which abilities and guns you like, and also depending on your playstyle, you can customize your character accordingly. The customization does not end here though. Your guns have a lot of different attachments. You're always on the hunt to get better and stronger ones to mod the gun to a real Xeno Melter. Furthermore, there are also a lot of paint jobs and some decals to give your guns more style. The decals can be scaled, rotated, flipped and can be placed wherever you want it to be. The character itself can have different outfits. There are quite a few for the body and the head, but you also have some level of detail for the base appearance. You take these classes to play through the campaign. In total, there are four campaigns with three missions each. That gives you in total 12 missions to play. More will probably come with the upcoming seasons. By the way, these will be free content. There's also a horde mode, which you unlock after finishing the campaign which is basically a wave defender. There are also dailies and weeklies that you can do for some bonus rewards. Before the mission starts, you can also pick challenge cards, and boy, there are a lot. Some of them really increase the difficulty. For example, this one, I made a bad call. You only have your tiny reserve pistol and that's it. You get quite a nice modifier for your gained XP, if you manage to complete the mission. There are a few cards that do help you though. For example, Ammo Hoarder, which doubles magazine size and maximum ammo count. So once you finish the missions, you can play around with the modifiers to give your team a true nightmare challenge. To make the missions a bit easier, you can also bring a few consumables. Sentry guns, mines, special ammo and other things. You get them as rewards or you buy them with your earned currency. There is a vendor in the game that sells you everything. Guns, attachments, challenge cards, go and take a look, it's worth it. I think this covers the basics. Then another thing that I want to mention is who developed that game. And Aliens Fire Team Elite got developed by Cold Iron Studios. It's a smaller studio with around 40 plus devs, at least that's what they state on their homepage. And this is something that you have to keep in mind when you review a game. If the game has a studio with, I don't know, hundreds of developers, you can nitpick a little bit more. This is a smaller studio though, and you absolutely have to keep that in mind for the upcoming chapters. And we will have now a look at the art style and the graphics. Next up, let's talk about art style and graphics. 
Now the art style and the graphics for this game, they are good, but they are honestly not outstanding. If you expect next-gen graphics or high-end graphics on PC, not really. They're good, they're solid, I enjoy them, it's nice. Um, they also allow like lower-end rigs to enjoy the game. And the important things are actually quite detailed. For example, the characters or the xenomorphs, they have some nice details. They have beautiful effects, for example, the flamethrower. It's just so many games struggle with good effects regarding fire, not Aliens Fire Team Elite. In general, all the effects that they have, like explosions, grenades, um, gunfire, everything is really nice and pleasantly to look at. The level design is also pretty nice. Lots of details, it's done with a lot of love. The maps, they do not feel too empty or too sterile, so that is really good. This is just how the levels look, though, because the level design, the mapping is kind of... The game is very linear. Okay, so if you expect, like, uh, an open map or multiple paths that you can take, not the case. There is sometimes you can go left or you can go right, and the next playthrough it's right and not left, but that's really it. There's also no level destruction, which is uh, a little bit sad, so if you shoot a wall, you have bullet holes. The bullet holes that disappear very quickly. If you shoot glass, the glass is not breaking or not completely breaking. You cannot destroy any walls. You're shooting rocket launchers and uh, yeah, it doesn't have impact on the terrain. So there's a little bit of a grain of salt, but overall I have to say I really enjoyed the art style and the graphics. And they're also a big reason why the next chapter, the performance, is actually pretty good. Now, do you need a high-end rig to play this game? Let's check that out. Aliens Fire Team Elite was, regarding performance, quite surprising. So, you do not need a high-end rig to play this game, right? Probably due to the art style and the graphics that I picked. I had no crashes, no freezes, and it was very smooth. I had initially quite a few stutters, but they patched a couple days ago the game again and I have to say all my stutters were finally gone. So that is really nice because the initial game, like the pure release, there were a few segments, although there was nothing going on on my screen, the FPS dropped down to like 15 or 20 just for like, I don't know, a minute or two and then everything was back to normal. I have no idea what happened there, but that seems to be resolved so that is very nice. It uses the Unreal Engine 4. I had with my system absolutely no FPS problems. I could always play 60 plus FPS, no problem. Of course, my rig is a little bit more on the beefy side, but I watched a few tests, a few performance tests that other people did, and you do not need a high-end rig for that one. All right, so performance is a plus. I would say we jump into the next one. So we will talk now a little bit about the audio. Something that is very often underrated is audio. So, how good is the audio in Aliens Fire Team Elite? So when I first played Aliens Fire Team Elite, there was one thing that absolutely catched my attention. And that were the iconic gun sounds. If you watch the movies or if you're familiar with the franchise, the video games, then you will recognize really a lot of sound effects. That is definitely not for everybody because a few guns sound a bit weird. For example, the smart gun or some assault rifles, you will be like, the sounds maybe even a little bit weak, the sound effects. But it's fitting. This is definitely not for everybody. The same with um, the sound effects that they use for the aliens. They're basically copy-paste from the movies, which I personally absolutely love. The audio puts you regarding the immersion into the movie. It is really fantastic. It's also copy-paste regarding the background music, which is, again, not for everybody. There were a few segments when I had my playthrough on stream, and people were like, what the heck is this background music? I didn't even realize that because I'm familiar with the franchise, but if you never played this, be aware, the background music is sometimes, well, let's say, unique. The voice acting, for my personal taste, is a little bit too cheesy. Probably they wanted to do that or they did that on purpose to fit the movies and the franchise in general, not taking themselves too seriously. The audio is not perfect though. There were a few audio bugs. For example, when the heavy class is shooting their equipment or they're shooting their minigun, when they die or go down while doing that and you revive them, you have permanently the heavy gun fire on the character and you can't get rid of that. 
So there are a few minor audio bugs. Overall though, the audio is doing a great job. Next up, how much can you expect from the story and the immersion level? Now let me start this chapter by saying that I am not really a story person. I rarely care about the story. Exceptions are for example when I play like, you know, Alan Wake or horror games. Then the story is a little bit more important for me. But I did not buy Aliens Fighting Elite because of the story. And I think this is pretty good because the story is very generic and very stale. It's like, save this, save that, blow this shit up. Repeat. I'm okay with that. I wanted an, a shooter game and I definitely got that. The immersion is also top notch. You get that movie feeling. The iconic sound effects, the background music, and also that they have a broad variety from the original Aliens is really cool. They have the facehuggers in the later missions, the Praetorians, the warriors. Is there a queen in the game? <laughs> Who knows? But I really enjoy the immersion. The story is honestly very flat. All right, but I think nobody buys Aliens Fighting Elite because they want to have, you know, top-notch storytelling. Want it easy? Want it tough? Let's talk about difficulty settings. One thing that Aliens Fighting Elite is doing very well is the difficulty setting. You have a setting for everybody. There's casual, there's standard, there's intense, there is extreme and there is insane. If you want to play alone, you get even some synths, some bots that will help you out. That works on lower difficulty until intense pretty well. Afterwards, if you go for extreme or insane, you need a good team. Otherwise, you will get shredded. You can have a chill experience with friends. If you just want to blast some aliens, you take the lower difficulties. If you really want a challenge, start with extreme and then afterwards with insane. We are currently working on extreme and it takes us a while. Insane is just... You have to be sweaty tryharding to get that done. So the difficulty, I really love it because there is something for everybody. Pick the one setting that you enjoy the most or go for an absolute challenge. Want to have fun in video games without backseat gaming? Let's talk about the single player. So if you want to play Aliens Fire Team Elite solo, that is possible to a certain level. You always will get two synths, they join you as bots, alpha and beta, and they're actually doing a good job. They are not perfect, but honestly, they are not a negative. And lots of times, their AI in games is not helping, it's actually hindering you at progress. Not the case in this game. But I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys, this game is not meant for solo play. You can do it, you can enjoy it, but where it really shines, that's the multiplayer. The way how this game is meant to be played, the multiplayer. At least, in my opinion. Aliens Fighting Elite had a very pleasant surprise for me, and that was the multiplayer experience. It is very simple and just works well. The invite system works over Steam, you can invite players, or players just join you if they're in your friends list. Very simple. Up to three players, they join up, and then you can have very different types of experience in this game. You can just go guns blazing on the lower difficulties, you pick the class that you want, the perks that you want, the guns that you want, it doesn't really matter, they will just die, you just have a fun time. Or you take a higher difficulty and suddenly the game becomes very tactical. You have to build a group setup that works, the classes, you need synergies, you also have to test a little bit different approaches to the events. Very cool, so whatever you just feel like this evening. Long time at work, you just want to see explosions and you want to see alien parts flying all over the screen. Normal to easier setting. Oh, you know, you want a real challenge? Take insane and uh, yeah, suffer a little bit. Multiplayer was for me personally a very fun experience. I thought this game would be like, I don't know, I played a couple times on stream and that's it, but I'm actually coming back to the game every couple days. I'm really enjoying this. So. From a very fun experience to a very challenging experience, the game covers it all. Now let's talk about the unique selling point. Why should you be interested in the game? So this topic is always a little bit difficult. What is the unique selling point of the game? And for me personally, it was, it's like the movies. 
you really feel like they put you into the movie Aliens and you're just having a good time. Maybe it's just me, but all the other similar games, like Left 4 Dead, GTFO, you name them, it's always infected, it's always zombies and that stuff, and it was such a refreshing experience to not kill any more zombies. I might be a little bit biased because people who know me, I play a lot of Hunt Showdown, so killing zombies is basically my daily business. But blasting some xenomorphs, really refreshing, I like that. Also the iconic guns, I'm really happy they stick to that, not everybody probably shares this opinion, but it helps me with the immersion, for example, smart gun or the assault rifles. Also the customization is really cool. Perks, the appearance. I like it. So those are for me the top three unique selling points. There are probably a few more, but this is really what I want to stress. Now, what did I like about Aliens Fireteam Elite? Now we are obviously leaving, you know, reviews. I try to always be not too biased, but this is of course now all my personal opinion. What did I like? Blasting Aliens. That's just fun, okay? The gunplay, in my opinion, feels very powerful. If you're standing in a hallway and you set up your defenses and then you whip out the heavy flamethrower and you see them burn to ashes, you feel like a god. It's so nice. Or if you play any of the other classes, everything has something that gives you a feeling of power and I really loved it. The enemy design is also nuts. They have quite a variety of aliens and also the pathing and how they look is well done. You're in this huge cave with all the holes in the walls and they just come crawling out of there. They're like on the ceiling, on the walls. They're coming left and right from behind. It's just crazy. What I also like were like the, the progress system. Unlocks, customization and perks. You always have something to do or something to grind, something to unlock. And it doesn't feel too grindy. Leveling the classes, which is necessary for the higher difficulties in my opinion, takes a bit, but not too long. If you invest an evening or two, then the class is maxed out. So, really loving that. The team play is also amazing on the higher difficulties. If you just have solo gameplay style and you're not helping each other, you don't have synergies or you don't pick the right classes, you will have a bad time. So, those are the five points that I like the most about the game. There are obviously a bit more. Um, but not everything is perfect, so let's have a look at that. So not everything made me happy, so let's talk about that. So I'm playing video games for almost 30 years now, and I have to say the perfect game has yet to come. So what would I change in Aliens Fighting Elite, or where do I think can they improve? First of all, it's the janky controls. The default point of vision is right shoulder perspective. Sometimes though you bump into a wall or you have to kiss that right wall because you're fighting in a hallway and there's not enough space to stand in the middle or on the left because otherwise you're crossing the line of fire from your teammates. So, and that's pretty cool, you can change to the left shoulder perspective. But here's the problem now, every time you reload, the game puts you back in right shoulder perspective. And sometimes when there's a wave of aliens coming and they're trying to kill you, you have to stand in the hallway for a bit. And every time you reload, I have to manually go back to left shoulder perspective. Just let me swap that, and as long as I'm not swapping back, lock me in that point of view. I think that's easy to fix. Something that is probably harder to fix is, and lots of third person games actually struggle with that, if you backpedal and you hit a wall or a box or a bigger object, you get zoomed in in basically first person. That zoom in totally throws me off every time. Then the level design, it's very linear. Now, this is probably not very fair because I know making games not linear. I don't expect open world, by the way. Not making the levels linear takes a shit ton of resources and time. And the studio is not too big. So I don't want to sound too mean now, all right? But it would be nice if there would be a little bit variety in the playthroughs. Right now you have like, you go left, then you go right, and after you go right, you have to go left again. And the next time it's like right, left, left, right, so just mirror, and that's it. So there's definitely room for improvement, maybe with some DLCs or something like that. Also the card system, I like the card system, but getting the cards can be a little bit 
of a pain in the ass. So how does it work? You play the game, you earn currency. The currency cannot be obtained with real life money, so there are no microtransactions for the cards, which is good. Then you go to the in-game vendor and you buy a bundle of challenge cards. And it's totally random what is in that bundle. So you can get good cards, you can get trash cards, and to be fair, for the highest difficulty, you kinda... Yeah, I would say that some cards are necessary, like double life, double ammo and that stuff. And it's so frustrating to farm these cards. Why is there no salvage mechanic? Let me sell or deconstruct or whatever the cards that I don't want, don't need, and maybe even for the fraction of the price, and let me buy a new bundle. And then, and this sounds way to me now, I actually don't mean it that way, but Aliens Fire Team Elite, if you're looking for something that is a revolution in the gaming scene, the game does not have it. The game is simple, but fun. So, is there enough replay value for this game? How much playtime can you expect from the game? One topic that is very important for me, that is playtime and replay value. That is very important. You want to get some bang for your buck. To be honest, we finished the main story in 9 hours the first evening. Now, there is only intense available. This is the highest difficulty that you can get and you get the higher difficulties by completing that. So currently we're working on extreme. So we tried some insane, but we got absolutely destroyed. The higher difficulties, they are tough, and you will definitely need some hours to finish that. We didn't even touch the horde mode yet, so that has probably some content too. And with the challenge cards, you can have some replay value. But at the end of the day, the replay value is limited. Especially since this is a PvE game, there is no PvP. PvP is normally, you know, an endless loop of content, normally. If you have only PvE, then most of the games are limited. And Aliens Elite Fire Team is no exception. At one point, I finished the game at the highest difficulty and then I'm done. So the game relies on new and fresh content. But I think I will get my money's worth for this one. Now, next, I think we should discuss, you know, a very lovely question. Should you buy this game? All right, this is always a fun question. Should you buy the game? Now, I showed you already quite a lot, so you have a good foundation to answer the question yourself, because you are actually the only one who can answer that. If I have to answer the question, I would say, as an Aliens fan, absolutely, yes, you should buy the game, it's pretty fun. It's also not too expensive, it's like 40 bucks, I think that is uh, justified. You can also wait for a sale and then pay, I don't know, 30 something, absolutely justified. It's simple. But fun. Just because it has nothing revolutionary doesn't mean it's a bad game. The stuff that they're doing is great. I would say I got my money's worth. It's a solid co-op PvE game. It's similar to Back for Blood, Left for Dead, GTFO and all the other games. And I would say I enjoy this game right here probably the most right now. So there you go. I personally would say yes you should buy the game if you are a fan of the franchise and if you like solid co-op PvE games. All right, let's jump to the final rating. Let's get to an end. Let's talk about the rating. Okay, final verdict time. Let's do a quick summary. So, I enjoyed the Alien movie flair. The gunplay is fun. The enemy design is scary, but at the same time, lovely. The pricing for the game is absolutely fair in my opinion. You have some variety for your playstyle because the classes are unique enough that every time you play a different class you have a different playstyle. Also you can do lots of different synergies regarding how your group setup so that is very enjoyable. The immersion is there but more regarding the alien vibe and not really the story of the game. Then again janky controls. Replay value, creativity, and minor bugs. I still have to see a game that got released and is bug free. Maybe one day. One sentence, I said it already twice, is probably the best description for Aliens Fighting Elite. Simple, but good. Regarding the final score, that was a close one. At first, I wanted to give it like a 7.0 out of 10, but I think I ended up, after playing it a little bit more, at a 7.5 out of 10. Let me know in the comment section how you would rate the game. Alright, that's it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.
And that's it for our first review on the channel, Aliens Fireteam Elite. I hope you liked the review. Keep in mind to sub to not miss any upcoming reviews. Deathloop will be next. I also want to thank my patrons for being awesome. Thank you for the support. Thank you for watching. More reviews will come soon. I see you in the next one. Until then, have a good day and bye bye.